Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. I hope that you are all good. So in today's video, we're gonna be doing a really pretty swirly stamping design over a glitter gel polish design base. So this particular video was requested on my channel. One of my lovely subscribers left me a comment saying that she'd recently got some glitter gel polishes and wanted to see some stamping over glitter gel polishes. So I thought I would put together a little design and share it with you guys. So I really hope you all enjoy Enjoy watching. Now, as you can see, I'm working with the Kiki London gel polish system today. And I've picked out a couple of colors that I thought worked really well together, but still had a little hint of autumn to them as well. So we're gonna come in and apply our first coats of color. Now I went for the beautiful Taylor Made, which is this really nice nude. I love it because it's a bit more of a beige nude and I felt as though it worked with the pretty violet vamp here as well. And then for our glitter, I went for the rose gold which is from their platinum collection and their platinum collection glitters are very full-on sparkly glitters but the rose gold one happens to be one of my favorites it's very full coverage so it's great for full cover nails but it's also brilliant for any kind of glitter nail art as well so once we've got our first coat of color applied and cured we're going to come in and add that second coat of color as you can see i work with quite thin layers of gel polish but the kiki london colors are very highly pigmented so two thin coats and you have this gorgeous creamy opaque finish now the glitter gel polish as you can see it's quite full coverage but it really does pop once you come in and apply that second coat of color i've simply popped it over a clear tip here it would look a little bit more opaque over a natural nail bed or over a base color so i could have popped tailor made down underneath but i decided to just do full-on glitter and then once we've done those second coats of color, we're gonna pop them into cure and we're ready to come in with some of the glitter nail art. So I'm gonna be doing a glitter fade on two of the nails. So I'm gonna use my Kiki London Ombre brush. So on the first nail, we're gonna do a glitter fade from the tip going down towards the cuticle area. So I'm applying my glitter where I want it to be the most full coverage. And then I'm gonna take my ombre brush and start gently feathering this back. And I'm kind of working down the glitter to spread it out and create that fade. You wanna leave a lot of it where you have placed it down if that's where you want your glitter to be more opaque and then just fade down. And then once you're happy with how much it's faded down, I like to come in and just branch it out a little bit further. So here, just bringing everything down that little bit more so that I'm happy with how that glitter fade looks. Now, I like to work with my glitter quite thin when I'm doing any kind of nail art so that we don't end up with a too bulky nail. So I've kept that first layer of glitter nice and thin and then we're gonna come in and repeat that to make it look more opaque and to just pop that little bit more. Depending on the look you're going for, you might be only happy with one coat of glitter. So again, I'm applying my glitter where I predominantly want it to be and then gently feathering it back using that ombre brush and it leaves off such a really simple, pretty glitter fade. So once we've cured that, we're gonna move on to the second now. And again, I'm doing it very similar, but this time we're doing it down at the cuticle area. So I've made sure to get a nice neat cuticle and then we're just gonna start fading that down using the ombre brush. Now, if you want this to fade out a little bit more, you can add a little bit of clear gel to your ombre brush so either some base coat or some top coat and it's going to pull the glitter down a little bit softer but i quite like the effect that it gives off here although you can see the brush strokes in the gel this will soften once you come in and apply your top coat so don't stress too much if you look as though you've got kind of these brush strokes they're just where the brush is stroking into the inhibition layer from the purple gel polish and how pretty does the rose gold look over the violet vamp? I'm absolutely loving this combination. I think it looks very glam. So on to the little finger in this design, I wanted to do a French tip. So I'm gonna take my Kiki London French brush and we're gonna create a really simple French nail design. So obviously we've already got our base done. I'm gonna load up my French brush with a generous amount of gel polish. I do find that I like to really load up this brush when I work with it to get a nice crisp smile line. And then I'm simply gonna place it down on the nail and pull down towards the tip. And as you can see, it's such a great way to get a consistent, even smile line. 
And then just coming in using the very tips of the brush just to bring that down and widen the wings of the smile line. And then I've done a really thin coat, so we're gonna come in and do a second coat just to really make that coverage from the color come through. So on the second coat, you're literally repeating the steps of the first coat. If you would like a little bit more of an in-depth French video, do let me know in the comments below and I'll see what I can do. But since getting the Kiki London French brush, I'm really finding a gel polish French a lot easier to do. I do also have a discount code for Kiki London, which I will leave in the description box below. So do check that out. That will get you 10% off of your Kiki London orders. Then once I had cured our French tip, that is all of our gel polish design finished. So we're ready to move on to the stamping. So one of the things I love doing over a glitter base with my stamping is swirls. So I have this clear jelly stamper plate. This is number 23 and it's actually predominantly a butterfly plate, but it has some really pretty simple swirl designs on it. And I just love how they look over the top of glitter. So I'm gonna give my plate a good clean with some acetone. I always like to wipe my plate before I start using it just to make sure it's cleaned off any dust or particles that have settled on the plate or any stamping polish that I might have missed off cleaning when I last used it. And then for my stamping polish, I'm using the Clear Jelly Stampin' Polish. This one is actually their sticky polish, but you can also use it as a regular polish as well. If you're wondering what their sticky polish is, it's a polish that leaves a bit more of a sticky layer and you can pop down chromes and glitters and things like that over your stamping. Again, if you'd like to see a video doing that, let me know. It's not something I've played around with too much. So I've kind of talked through the steps of this first image, so I will go over them a little bit more. But as you can see, I've left this first image in real time as well for stamping, so you can see how quickly or how slowly I'm working. A lot of the time I say you do need to work quite quickly with your stamping, but I'm not talking about zooming through, I'm just talking about kind of making sure your steps go quickly and you're not hanging around with your stamping polish on your plate too much because then it will dry. So let's move on to the second image. I have already cleaned my plate with some acetone so I'm going to take my stamping polish apply a generous amount of it to the image and scrape you can scrape once or twice it kind of depends how you feel that excess polish has been removed then I like to just give my stamper a quick flick of the wrist across the image so a really quick roll when I say a quick flick of the wrist I just been really quickly rolling that stamp part across the plate. I'm not sure how to explain it, but as you can see, it picks up nicely. Then we're gonna press down. I like to rock from side to side. And then that image has stamped down beautifully. And I just love that swell look over a glitter fade, like how pretty and elegant does it look and how easy was it to do? I absolutely love stamping for any quick, easy designs. Again, giving the plate a good clean with some acetone just to make sure we remove all of that stamping polish. Now the next image is a layered one. So as you can see, you've got two parts. I went for this one because I wanted a bit more of a full cover stamp over the full glitter nail. So we're popping down the first layer of the image, which is the main bulk of it. So I decided to do that in white. Again, it's picked up effortlessly. I use my lint roller to remove any image that I don't want to stamp down on the nail. I find it a lot easier to remove the excess image from the stamper rather than having to move it from, from the nail. Again, press, rock and roll, and then gently pull your stamper off. And you could I could have just left it like this because it was still quite full cover. But I decided I did want to add in the second layer that this image offers. So again, I'm giving that plate a really good clean with my acetone, making sure we remove any stamping polish. I'm really sorry that my camera keeps moving here. I had it set up differently and I keep knocking it. So I need to have a play around with that. So on to the second image, I wanted to go for a purple that matched as close to the gel polish as possible. This one was a little bit more brighter and dark. So quite, yeah, a little bit more brighter than the gel polish, but it was the closest match I had in my kit. Now with the clear jelly stamper plates, a lot of the time you get an image card which shows you how the image should look once it's layered. So I have that next to me and I'm kind of trying to refer to it and then trying to line up the image as best as I can. It didn't lay up perfectly. Layered stamping is definitely something I need to practice around a bit more, especially with these full cover designs because I find these are the hardest. But I layered it, lined it up, sorry, as best as I could. 
and then stamped down and it kind of did look nice how it added in the splash of the purple it filled in those gaps but you can still see the glitter shining through so again we're going to give that plate a really good clean and then we're going to do our final stamped image on the final nail now don't worry if your plate is looking a little bit smeary. I find that acetone does this a lot, but what I then tend to do is once I've finished all of my stamping, I'll give it a clean with a fresh um, piece of kitchen towel. And then you can also wipe it over with a dry cloth and that will get rid of all your smeary marks as well. I just tend not to waste time doing that between each image, if that makes sense. I just do it once I've finished all of that particular nail. So lastly, we're adding on this really pretty swell. It's kind of got a bit of a paisley effect to it as well. So I really liked this one. And I liked how this one would curve over the stamp, the French tip. So it's gonna cover a little bit of that French smile line, but I thought it finished off the design elegantly. So again, press, rock from side to side and pull off. And then you can see that has stamped down absolutely beautifully. And then that is all of our stamping finished. So I find stamping over glitter gives off a really, really pretty effect. It looks as though you've put a lot more effort into the design, but it's really, really effortless to do. The last step is of course to come in and top coat to seal in all of your gel polish and your stamping design. So I'm taking the Kiki London top coat. Now this is a top coat that requires you to wipe off the tacky inhibition layer, but it is my absolute go-to top coat for over stamping because it doesn't separate. I do find that certain top coats, I think it's more because of the stamper rather than stamping polish, but sometimes they can leave oils on the nail. And then it kind of makes your stamping polish, your top coat, sorry, separate. I just don't get no separation with this top coat. So it's my go-to for over any kind of stamping and it leaves off a beautiful shine. You just need to wipe away that tacky inhibition layer and this is the finished result. So I hope this gives you some ideas if you're looking to stamp over glitter. If you'd like to see more of these simple ideas, do just let me know in the comments below. I'm always happy to give anything a go. Thank you all so much for watching. If you did enjoy this video, please do give it a thumbs up, leave me a comment below, and I shall see you all again in the next one. Lots of love, take care, bye bye.